Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video where I, the focus is going to be all about Market NetFlow. I want to go into great detail on every feature and component that Market NetFlow has available to help everyone get a better understanding of what it's displaying and how it can give us a significant edge while trading. Before we get started, if you'd like to get a 10% discount for Tradedix, don't forget to use my referral link in the description. You'll also find referral links for TradingView and Top Step Funded Trader programs that will give us both discounts. Lastly, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is because I see a lot of questions on Twitter and other places about market net flow, especially when the charts get posted. Uh, so I just figured it would be worthwhile to take some time and break it all down for everyone. So uh, everyone can easily reference this video for a complete understanding. And so that being said, the first thing we have to talk about with market net flow is what these lines mean. So the red line, the green line and the white line. So we'll start there. And essentially, we're looking, uh, and just to, to fill out some basic terminology so everyone understands, if you're new to options trading, you might not be aware of this, but when you're buying a call, that means you, you, you have, you're you long a call. If you're selling a call, you're short a call. If you're buying a put, you're long a put. And if you're selling a put, you're short a put. So long calls and short puts, meaning bought calls and sold puts are bullish. Whereas short calls, so sold calls, and long puts, which are bought puts, are bearish. Now, the green line is showing us the net values of long calls minus short puts. The red line is, excuse me, long calls minus short calls. The red line is showing us long puts minus short puts. So we're getting the net value of calls, whether based on whether they were bought or sold, and the net value of, of puts, whether they were bought or sold. And then lastly, the white line is the price of SPY, which is an ETF based on the S&P 500. So looking at this chart briefly, and let me just make this a little bigger here, you can see that when puts are on this rise, on the rise, this red line is on the rise, that essentially is telling us that more puts are being bought than puts being sold. So it's a bearish indicator when this red line is rising. The green line going down in this situation or later on when it's going up is the opposite is true but when it's going down in this situation we're seeing that more calls are being sold versus calls being purchased which is also a bearish indication now when you combine these two bearish indicators if we look at the price of spy which is the white line we go down which is to be expected because this means across the market and that's what I should specify. It's called market net flow because it's it's taking all of the options across the entire market and putting them all into one viewpoint for us so we can see, okay, across the market, there's a whole bunch of put buying happening and, and calls are pretty flat and even somewhat selling off. And therefore we can expect SPY, which is a really good measure of the market as a whole. Now it is an ETF centered around the top 500 stocks in the market. However, it is also a good gauge of the market overall so therefore if the market is looking bearish based on the flow we would expect to see spy bearish now when that starts to transition and we start seeing puts being sold and calls being bought we start to see the market climb now usually this is a leading indicator now there are times where it's not a leading indicator and price will lead flow which is, is something we should talk about and this is a good example of that where we reached a bottom and you can see that as price drove up, we saw puts starting to sell off and calls starting to climb. However, mo more often than not, flow will lead the direction of SPY. And that's why this tool is so incredibly useful. But before we get into that, let's get into some other topics we need to discuss. Now, algo flow, which is also shown on the chart, is essentially the sum of net calls and net puts. Now, algo flow, actually, some history background. AlgoFlow actually came before NetFlow, and as stated, it was the, the net, net sum of calls and puts shown as one line. So we can see in this little diagram that the SPY stock price is, is this yellow line, and then AlgoFlow is this green line. And uh, market NetFlow on the website, on this image over here, you can see this shows up in the background. So if I just hide the SPY price, the call price, and the put price, we can see we have algo flow here, right? So market-wide algo flow, net calls and net puts combined 
was showing bearish and then we can see it started shifting more 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 and more bullish until eventually it flipped and then it went heavily bullish so that's what that background is showing is actually algo flow uh getting right back into it something else we should talk about is some options we have here so your default views on market net flow are going to show you one day of options flow market wide and it's going to show you all expirations now that can be changed and this is actually somewhat useful because as me personally as a day trader and a scalper i want information to be faster i may not care about expirations that are far out right and i and most of the time i only care about the day in front of me but that can change you know if you're looking to swing if you want to get a perspective of the market as a whole gauge some higher time phrase which is always important to to get a get a feel for what's going on well outside of the view that we're focused on so getting more of a bird's eye view of the market you can actually go up here in history and you can look at two days and you can see this paints a very different picture so if you're looking at the one day you can see okay this this was bearish at first and we did see it drop however it started to climb back up now all of a sudden if you look at two days cumulative history of flow of net flow we can see it actually was bearish the whole time excuse me bullish the whole time and there wasn't that many significant changes with puts we did see it climbing here which is where we did see uh, spy dropping but then as they fell off things started to climb so zooming out and giving yourself a, a more of a bird's eye view previous history now we can see here puts were on the rise it gives you a lot of insight into actually what's happening behind the market and what's driving some of these rallies and if these rallies are sustainable on top of that if we go to expirations and this is one of my favorite features uh the default view is showing all expirations but we can narrow that down okay show me only options expiring within 30 days across the market show me only options expiring within 15 days across the market show me options expiring within seven days across the market and this is what I what I love about the seven day view as a day trader scalper when I'm trading SPY, I trade SPY, QQQ and IWM all the time. I actually trade the futures versions of those, but regardless, regardless, it's the same thing. And I use market net flow for that. And you can see that if we're looking at the seven day expirations, we do see that shift in puts and calls happen when when the price of SPY started climbing. We do see that faster on the short dated expirations than we do the long dated expirations. And that is typically the case. Now, it, that does not mean only watch the short term expirations. It's very important to constantly be checking across all expirations. And as you use this tool more and back test, you get a feel for it you'll get an idea of why that's important because it does give you different perspective. And some, some of the time they're not actually in line. Some of the time short dated expirations can be bearish and long data expirations can be bullish. And when we see that oftentimes there's a lot of chop happening and, and it might be an indication to stay out. Uh, not always, but it's just something that we should always be considering. Now, another thing that this chart is showing us is momentum. So momentum is calculating the speed at which net flow is becoming bearish or bullish takes current net flow minus the average of n so the default is going to be 60 minutes in net flow so in summary it's the current value of net flows uh the sum of net flow minus the last hour of the sum of net flow so that is shown down here in this area and this is essentially telling us how the, it's showing momentum so how how rapidly we're shifting from bearish to bullish and there are some strategies you can play off this for instance like when we see this shift here where it goes from bearish to bullish we get this little green dot on spy and that can be used as a scalp entry to take calls now you do need to be careful with this because sometimes we get into these areas where it's choppy right where there's not a clear winner of uh bulls versus bears and, and net flow terms and you can get a lot of mixed signals together so it's always important to pair this with other indicators other technical indicators on your charts however this can complement any strategy that you might be using it's not meant to be used on its own and you can actually adjust these momentum values which is something i, I highly recommend trying so going in and trying seven day expirations with momentum of 15 is going to give you a lot more noise Whereas if you go and set it to 150, looking across all expirations, you're going to obviously get a lot less noise and therefore a lot less false signals, but also a lot less entries based off that momentum indicator. So 
I highly recommend playing around with that and getting a feel for uh, what, what settings you like best. I typically leave momentum at the default. It's not something that I trade a lot, and I will get into some incredibly powerful strategies that I do trade, but I wanted everyone to be aware of what this was showing us down here. Now, moving right along, another great feature of this is we can easily see support and resistance lines that are based off of price and algo flow, and we can also see uh, gamma exposure support and resistances. So I talk about it in other videos. I don't want to get too much too much into it here, but on the left-hand side, if you go to options, ticker dashboard, then options, and you pull up any ticker, but in this case, we're focused on SPY, and you scroll down, you can see all sorts of uh, uh, hedging data based on Vanna, Charm, Gamma, and get an idea of how dealers, market makers are going to be hedging uh, the S&P 500 and get an idea of levels that they might be pushing towards that might act as magnets or key reversal points, which is displayed here. But what's really nice is you don't necessarily have to look at this dashboard. You can go up here and say top GEX levels from short term contracts. So contracts that are expiring within 30 days and it will show you. And as you can see, these GEX levels were this way when the day started. So we have the, the SPY price and these weren't necessarily super useful today because we didn't drive all the way up here, but oftentimes areas of, of high amounts of gamma exposure can act as targets. And it, it may have been dealer hedging may have been a big part of the reason why we're moving higher. Now it, it could also be related to charm and Vanna. That's another topic for another video. Uh, but so these aren't often always that useful as support and resistance levels on this chart. Uh, and it's not, and in this case, it's actually not showing some of the ones that were closer to price, but it is worth looking at just in case it does. But also up here, we can go to algor algorithmic support and resistance levels. And these are really nice. So if you're looking at the dotted lines here, you can see these are, these are plotted for you. And these are also can act as support and resistance levels. So if you're a support and resistance trader, which I know I am and most people are, we can see, okay, when price broke below this, it acted as resistance for a bit. Once we broke above, we came above, retested it. This would have been a great long entry point and then moved higher all the way up to the next uh, support resistance level, at which point we broke that and we moved all the way up to the next one and these levels are surprisingly accurate and i i usually do reference them now i pl i plot them on my own chart and or i i plot my levels and then i check these levels to make sure that they're in line with each other and it oftentimes helps when sometimes i may be missing a level or if we have a big rally one direction or another I might not necessarily have a level plotted already above or below. And so I can quickly reference this and get an idea. And as you can see, I mean, these levels worked really, really well today. Uh, once we broke this level, we kind of just chopped around it. We were penned a little under it until we did break above. And then we had a perfect retest and moved all the way to the next one. And if you've watched any of my other videos about the way I trade, I trade level to level. Uh, that's how I like to take my stops and uh, profit taking targets is level to level based on what I plot it. And so if you have trouble traditionally with plotting support and resistance, this is a nice tool that can help you with that. And these do work very well. And again, this, you can find it up here on this button. So another thing that you have available to you on market net flow is actually moving averages. And there's several ways to use these. They can be dynamic support and resistances, or a lot of people like to use moving averages uh, for uh, looking for crosses for entries or an exit. So let's talk about that for a second. If we were, now let me set the default view here and one day history, momentum default. And I'm actually going to just refresh my page to make sure that everything's cleared off here. Now, if we click this, moving averages button you can see these blue dotted lines pop up and notice this when we're talking about the dynamic support and resistance so you can see spy price came down the first line started getting plotted and it actually acted as resistance for a bit now once we broke above it and we came above that we can see we have another uh support uh, excuse me moving average line which in this case is the 50 period moving average the one that was initially plotted is the 20 period moving average we get a cross on those and this would actually be a solid entry point so if you're playing the moving averages and you're taking off the cross you can enter on the cross 
Of course, you want to always pay attention to net flow to make sure it's validating what you're seeing. So we're seeing a bullish cross and we're seeing, so the 20 crosses above the 50 and we're seeing puts being sold, which is a bullish indicator. And you could take an entry off of these and you can essentially ride that up until you see the next cross, right? And that can be your exit point. Now, at some point, this other moving average line appears, which is the 100 period moving average. And that's the reason why they take some time to appear, because we have the 20, the 50 and the 100. We need to populate that data before those moving averages appear. But you can see when they go flat, that's also an indication that it might be a good time to stay out because we're getting some chopping and some consolidation. And then sure enough, once the 20 breaks above the 50 again, we get that confirmation that we can take long entries and proceed to move higher. And again, it, we want to make sure we're confirming with NetFlow. And what's nice about this too is it works really well on the short-term expirations or also moving out and seeing more days, more uh, cumulative history there. So uh, that's something I wanted to point out, these moving averages. If you're someone who likes trading using moving averages, EMAs, SMAs, Hall moving averages, whatever it might be, these might be a good option for you. They do actually work pretty well. And again, nothing is ever 100%, so it's always very important to backtest this stuff. So Moving right along into other strategies, and now we're starting to get into stuff that I depend on heavily every single day. Uh, we're going to get into market net flow crosses, divergences, talked about momentum scalps already, and then trend trend changes. So if you ever need a reference for this outside of this video, you can actually, if you click this button right here, it will show these strategies for you, all four strategies that I just listed as a quick reference point. But let me go ahead and make this full screen just to make this a little easier to see. Get rid of the moving averages here. Now, market net flow crosses are essentially when, so we have our, and let me let me get rid of algo flow here too. So you can see at the start of the day, we have puts cross above calls, right? So we have calls diminishing and moving down and puts cross above that because bought puts are moving higher. This is a great time for buying a put or shorting, which would be a bearish entry because this is a bearish indication. But the key is, is you wanna give a little bit of time because sometimes they'll cross or they're gonna look like they'll cross, like you can see over here, and then just cross right back over. And that these are times of consolidation when we see this. Whereas when we have a cross and then they break away, like you see over here, you have, give it a little time to break away. That's a good indication that a strong move is happening and that's, pretty much my favorite, probably my number one favorite strategy. Now you do, again, need to take time to line it up with the chart, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But, so that's strategy number one. Now, divergence is very interesting. Divergence is when we see, so like in this case, where we see uh, puts uh, prices diverging from what NetFlow is showing us. Now, there's not a very good example of it on this particular chart. But essentially what it means is like you can see when we started climbing here, puts were diminishing. So that's not really divergent. And then eventually calls catch up and start increasing. So that's not really divergent. But if we saw the opposite, so we do get a little bit of divergence here. Uh, nothing major, but essentially we have price moving up and then we have calls falling and puts are flat. That would mean divergence. Now, what we're talking about in this case is significant divergence where you get a big move like where you see puts on the rise significantly and you see spies price also on the rise when it should be falling because this is a bearish indication and that's divergence and when you see divergence that's by far my second most favorite uh, strategy to play using NetFlow and I, I immediately start looking for the best level for me to in that case I would be looking to take puts so the best level for me to take puts off of if I, if I saw that bearish divergence where uh, spies price was still climbing, but but uh, puts puts were rising and calls were falling rapidly. Uh, that's your cue to start lining up a position. And the opposite is true if you see the bullish where calls are rising and puts are dropping rapidly, but spies price is also dropping. That's again divergence, and that's something we want to act on. I won't talk about momentum scalps again because we did already touch on that with adjusting momentum. Now, market trend is sort of interesting. And the way that works is, and you, I'll have to take a screenshot here to draw this, but if you visualize some some lines here, so like we see this downtrend occurring on uh, 
on the net puts line here, right? So we see this downtrend occurring. And in the meantime, we see this uptrend occurring on SPY's price. Now there comes a point where the trend lines cross. So let me just line these up here where the trend lines actually cross with each other. And when you see this cross happen, this can actually be an indication to look for a bullish entry where we have SPY's price crossing uh, net puts. And the same applies for with the net flow crossing, right? So, and, and that goes in hand in hand with the market cross that we already talked, but the trend lines can be just as effective as an actual cross themselves. Uh, um, and, and the same would be true if we were to see like, a, a, let's see if we can find another bearish indication that I could show you, which there's not one on this chart. So I'll leave it at that. But that is something to watch for is if you can envision trend lines on these charts and you envision trend lines either on price or on the net flow lines, you can actually play those crosses. And again, you don't want to immediately jump in. You want to take the time to look at your chart and line up a play. But it's something definitely worth noting that is quite interesting that that occurs. So the next thing that I want to get into is why wouldn't why are we using market net flow? Why are we not watching net flow on SPY or QQQ? Now, if you're on this page and we scroll down, we have SPY and QQQ's net flow right in front of us. Now, this is actually mostly useless to us. And the reason being is because SPY and QQQ have so much weight given to their underlying holdings that those are what's really driving price, which we see with market net flow. We're getting an idea of all the flow for all their underlying holdings. So that's what's really driving the price. And because of that, market makers and dealers know this. So when they need to hedge positions, so say if they're buying a whole bunch of stock across a whole bunch of different tickers and they need a place to hedge it, they do so by buying puts on SPY. So we can see, and you'll see it all the time in live flow, and it also shows up in net flow where we see hundreds of millions of dollars of puts being bought on SPY, and there's absolutely no movement on SPY, none whatsoever. And you can actually see that here, where we see a whole bunch of calls being sold and puts being bought, and SPY just continues to climb. Whereas if we look at NetFlow, we can see this accurately shows what's happening. Calls, calls are being bought, puts are flat, and SPY is rising. But if we look at just the net flow, it's a completely different picture and it's the wrong picture. And that's because of hedging mechanics, right? We need, we need to look at the underlying holdings, what's happening with the flow on those. We need to see the big picture of that flow, which is what market net flow shows us. And the best part is market net flow excludes these ETFs. So market net flow is not showing us flow from SPY and QQQ. It purposely excludes that. So it's literally getting rid of all the hedging flows or not all of them but most of the hedging flows for us and only showing us the flow that we care about whereas if you're looking at spy or qqq you're looking at a lot of hedging flow and you're not typically going to get useful information out of that if any if anything it's just going to lead you in the wrong direction usually so that's why it's important i can't stress it enough do not use net flow on spy qqq if you're playing those tickers which i play them every single day do, do use market net flow. Do not use net flow on SPY or QQQ. And so I just want to talk about one of my favorite strategies. So as, as always, it's important to co combine TA. I have so many videos on this. I'm not going to get into it very much here, but I just want to show that when we have these, when I'm, so I use volume price analysis, which depends on volume profile, volume and price action. And that's the way I trade. Uh, and I do have VWAP in there because oftentimes it does act as a level. Um, uh, retail often will fade that and you can get a response there. But anyway, um, so this is why TA is so important. Technical analysis is so important because starting off the day today, we can see that puts were on the rise as we talked about and we had that market cross. And sure enough, we move higher, reject off of a volume gap and proceed to fall. However, when we bottom out here and, and even though uh, it looks like that it could continue, I mean, we at this point, we don't see much happening in the way of, uh, it looks like puts are going to keep rising and calls are going to keep falling. However, the chart shows differently, and this is considered divergence, and it would have been playable had calls and puts not at start, had, had they not started catching up. But we can see we actually get this break, right? So we form a triangle here, 
and we break out the the top of the triangle the angle of the triangle and that's a that's is a bullish break so this is where it's important to make sure we're combining our own technical analysis with it and using it for reference and we know that this move is okay to jump in when we get these impulsive candles combined with net flow showing us okay now call puts are diminishing rapidly calls are increasing that's encouragement to stay in for instance up over here we get a flag break once again with that flag break we get that encouragement to stay in the position because at this point calls have risen rapidly puts have fallen dramatically so we could easily take this break and then at this point you can just play level to level with your own technical analysis or you can use the algorithmic support and resistance that they have for you either one would have been perfectly fine today but i just want to point out never ever ever just play this stuff blind when you see big shifts which happen oftentimes before price will move take your time and line up an entry figure out how you're going to get in base it off a level or some sort of pattern or fibonacci or whatever you like best i use i use levels with volume profile and price action but take your time and line it up properly now uh so we're getting near the end of it here i just want to talk about back testing make sure you back test everything you see and we talked about and which you can go up here and you can look at historical dates on market net flow and get an idea of what it looked for a particular day and look at spy's chart with it and get an idea of what things meant like you could see uh on uh july um 27th it was a very interesting day 20 july 27 2022 because it was fomc minutes so we get this massive move from fundamental macro news and then we saw that the move was going to continue because of market net flow so definitely do some back testing incredibly useful tool and you need to find your comfort with it so it's important you toy with that and then basically an honorable mention here would be uh net market net flow in the discord two commands that you can use for market net flow are t net flow market uh, and then you'd have your cumulative history and then the uh, uh, dates of expirations and or t algo flow market same thing cumulative history and 30 days of expirations would be this command so just something to keep in mind if you're in the discord other than that that's all i really wanted to cover and i hope that was very useful for you especially if you're unfamiliar with market net flow and even if you're very familiar with market net flow hopefully you learned something that you didn't know before and if you did i'd appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing and let me know if you have any questions on twitter or youtube or the discord and i really appreciate your time watching thanks